find certain scriptures that just really bother you. It's almost like a mailman brings you some mail. Yes. And uh, with that uh, uh, scripture, it talks about every one of us receiving these talents. And you know, with the pastors, it's, a, it's a, even more so because you precious saints, every one of you has got a talent. And multiple one. talents. But just every individually one. is a talent. Every one. And every one of us is going to stand before the judgment seat of God to yes. answer for the deeds. Yes. And I'm going to answer to God, what did you do with those talents I give you? <clears throat> you can say, well, I let them be buried on a pew seat. <laughs> That's what yes. we do. Yes. And we're, we know that Ephesians 4 says he gives some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of saints, for the work of ministry. And our job is to, to help you discover and uncover your talent in Christ Amen. and what God's got you to do. There ought to be a burning passion in every one of us. And allow that freedom that we're God wants to work. And these talents that God put in me, you know, sometimes we can say, well, it's not time. We can find a thousand excuses. Amen. In Proverbs, I'd like to wish they would rip out some scripture there. <laughs> I gotta say that. Brother Jim Hefter was a friend of mine. He passed away. He was one of my elders, pastor, grew him up. And he was talking to a man one time. He didn't say what scripture it was. And, but uh, he quoted a scripture. And this man said, well, I don't believe that. And Brother Hefter said, you don't believe that? He said, well, turn to certain scripture. And he said, now read that back to me. And he said, he read it. And he said, well, I still don't believe it. He said, well, you don't believe that? And he reached over and he tore that page out of his Bible. <laughs> he said, well, if you don't believe it, I do. And he said, I'll stick that in my Bible. And he said, no, I don't. He said, please. He said, give me back that scripture. He said, I can't believe you tore my Bible. <laughs> he said, well, you said you didn't believe it. He said, so it's just taking up space and cluttering your Bible. He said, so why clutter up your Bible with the scripture you said you don't believe? And the man said, please give me back my chapter. And he said, no. Only way I'm going to give you that page back is if you tell me you believe that scripture. <laughs> Because so once you believe it, we've got an obligation to live it and to fulfill it. I don't care how much it crosshairs you. You've got to come to terms with that. And there's that 25th chapter because sometimes there's a great responsibility laid on each and every one of us. Yes, sir. As a pastor, there's a responsibility laid on me. Yes, sir. But you, as a child of God, you can't say, well, uh, the pastor didn't tell me. Well, you've been told today. <laughs> Amen. I like the little girl. We brought the last year, not this convention, but a convention before. And we got a little, uh, brought some of our kids from uh, our church with me. And this one little girl, Caitlin, she's my pet, and she knows that. And uh, she rode in the car with me, but I have a big bottle of water, the flavored water. And I said, now, Caitlin, I'll share this bottle of water with you, but I am not going to let you guzzle this. I said, you got the bladder of a peanut. I know you. <laughs> I said, we'll be stopping every five miles with you. And I said, now, you just take sips. And I said, we got a long trip ahead of us, so you take sips. And she did that, and we made the trip without having to stop every few miles with her. But on the way back, we stopped at McDonald's before we ever got out of Bradenton. And I wasn't paying attention to her. And I swear, we drove 10 miles up the road, no farther than 10 miles. And she said, uh, Mark, I've got to stop and go to the bathroom. <laughs> Mark said, well, Caitlin, we just left. She said, I know, but Pastor Bond didn't watch me close enough. <laughs> <laughs> there are just certain things that we just can't watch you close enough. There are just certain responsibilities that we have to take on ourselves. And then, you know, just thought about it, Proverbs 6. He said, go to the end thou son, and learn her ways. He goes to see how that he prepares. And then, was it Proverbs 24? <laughs> talks about, I went by the field of the slothful, <laughs> by the vineyard of a man void of understanding. And said, the field was covered with nettles and thorns. And said, the stone wall was broken down. And I said, a little sleep, a little folding in the hands of sleep. So shall thy destruction come upon thee. 
and I want as an arm uh, destruction as an arm and thy travail is yes. one in travail. Uh -huh. And so it's just a little thing that we can start off in this great journey. What is it around the 15th chapter of Matthew? Somewhere along there about that proverb or this uh, parable of this man finding his treasure in a field. Yes. And that he went and sold all he had Praise. that he might possess that treasure. And Brother Marlowe quotes there uh, Colossians 1, 24 through 27. The mystery that's been hidden from the ages has been revealed to you Gentiles. Is Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Christ come in and tabernacle with you with the wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost, folks, there's a treasure in there. Come on. Hey, hey. And I'm telling you, it's worth selling everything you've got to buy that field. Because that's what it's going to take. There's a beautiful picture of an overcomer when Isaac had two sons named uh, Jacob and Esau. Esau was the firstborn. Adam was the firstborn in your body. But Esau saw something that his brother, he got the blessing, he got the birthright, yes. and he got the blessing. Now that's not right. I'm, that's my twin brother. Why does he get so much? He's going to get it all. <laughs> I'm just going to get the leftovers. But Jacob, he was determined. I'm going to get the, the inheritance. I'm going to get the double portion. Yes. And so he found his brother hungry one day, and he said, will you feed me? He said, I'm starving to death. He said, give me the birthright. And so he didn't care about the birthright. He said, sure, have the birthright. Right. And so he bought the birthright. Now Esau didn't get, ever get mad at that. That didn't bother him a bit hardly. He said, he said later on, though we're in Timothy, he said, though afterwards, he sought it with bitter tears, and there was no room found for repentance. Later on, he regretted that. But what did I do? I traded something great for a bowl of beans. My God. My if we can God. trade off certain things, we as children of God, God, for some momentary pleasures, right. buddy, later on, we can really cry over it, but it's already done. But saying that, what really got old Esau mad? was when Jacob stole the blessing. That's what really got old Adam stirred up. You know, the enemy of your soul, he's not too, doesn't get too mad that you're getting the Holy Ghost. I've seen people have the Holy Ghost and just stay as unrighteous as they ever was before they ever got the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter. That's the enemy of your soul. That flesh doesn't get stirred. You get the Holy Ghost speaking tongues, then you make me mad and I bite your head off. There's no cross there. But try to get that blessing. To this man will I look. So my broken spirit and a contrite heart. Come on. And trembles at my word. That's the person that's going to get the blessing. Amen. That's the one that's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Enter into the rest. God is looking for some people that will take these wonderful truths and allow this Holy Ghost. Say the weapons of our warfare oh, are not, on, not carnal, carnal. Yeah. but they're mighty. mighty. They're pulling down yeah. the yeah. yeah. But say without holiness, no man shall see God. You know, it would be a sad thing if God would ask me to be holy and just left me on my own devices. Because I've taught God this. I don't know if you talk to God. I talk to Him. Just like he's my father, which he is. And uh, I complain to him. <laughs> I thank him a lot. But especially when I first started ministry. Because I come from a background of works. That like Brother Marlowe said, that I tried to make the first Adam behave. I really worked on Adam. I tried to fast him into being good. I tried to pray him into being good. I tried to church him into being good. I tried everything to make Adam be good. But I found out it was just like my mother and me. You know, Stephen, I'm going to beat the devil out of you. I knew my mother was trying her dead level best to make Bond a good little boy. I was good as long as my mother had her eye on me. But the moment my mother took her eye off of me, 
invariably, I wanted to be good, but I would find this little boy getting in all kinds of trouble in church, out of church. You could put me on a desert island, and I could find some way to get in trouble <laughs> with my mother. <laughs> and she'd just go, oh, Bon, 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 why can't you be good? <laughs> I wanted to be. And, uh, but that's where this, where Brother Marlon was talking about these talents. This Holy Ghost yes. that you got. Yes. When I'm telling you, we can do all things. Somebody say all things. All, all things. things. Yes. Through Christ. Through Christ. Yeah. Through strength. Through Christ. Yeah. Not just some things, yeah. but all things. All things. And that's what's a wonderful, all victorious life. Amen. Is that we've got this treasure now. Yes. In an earthen yes. vessel. Yes. That the excellency might be of God. Yes. And not of ourselves. Amen. I know this. I know that God has fully equipped me for the job that he has called me to do. Yes. I have nothing to be afraid of. Yes. I used to make up. I was a professional worrier. Believe that? I didn't think that in my personality. But I did. I would stay all night. It's like Brother Mar Marlow said. I would try to please people. And I'm still much of a people pleaser. I love people. And I'm just, that's where I'm, I'm that's who I am. But anyway, but I would cry all night. Oh, what if I did this? What if I hadn't done that? But I found out right now that if I'll just try to please Jesus, yes. Amen. And keep Jesus first and foremost, Come on. Come on. Come on. and everything Come on. else Come on. in place, Amen. it's going to be fulfilled. Amen. The children of God, there is something. Amen. There's just a peace that will enter your life Amen. if you will love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. Yeah. But you cannot do it and I don't know why. I always get back over the Holy Ghost for you. But I just know this. It truly is a secret, especially amongst the Pentecostal people. Glory. That we have forgotten that we've got this treasure. That if we allow this treasure, Glory. it'll take care of everything. Yes. I'm convinced of this. I cannot play one note on the piano. But you know this? That I know I can? Yeah. I know I can. Yes. I can do anything. It's in all things. Yes. Yes. Through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Brother David, in his lifetime, he's got a friend over there. This sister in his uh, one day church is a friend. Said the night she got the Holy Ghost, she was laying under the, the pew there or the altar and said it looked like she was playing a piano. Just that wonderful, it's an odd manifestation. She was just doing all these things. You know what? She didn't know how to play a piano. But you know what she did when she got up from the underneath the altar? She went over and played the piano. Glory be to Hallelujah. I tell you, Joseph, he wasn't anything special. He thought he was running the living. Amen. But God, Spirit, come on. Huh? God. But he could do whatever he needed to be done. He could interpret dreams. God. When Daniel went up into Babylon, looked at these young men. Daniel knew who he was. And that's one of the things I'd like to say to you. If you would just really realize who you are and whose you are, you wouldn't be what you are. I'm telling you, you would never be discouraged anymore. You would never walk through a trial anymore. Because my scripture is Romans 8.28 that I know this to be a fact. All things work for Brother Bond's good because I've been called and I've been all these things for Amen. the wonderful purpose of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you'll learn to realize that all things work together for good to them that are called, are the called according to His purposes. Amen. And we can just say on Amen. Amen. Cancer, is that a bad thing? I went Amen. through that. One of the greatest experiences I've ever had was cancer. Yes. One of the greatest experiences I ever had, Brother Marlon. Jesus. If I hadn't went through cancer, Jesus. Sister Amber, I wouldn't know God could heal Jesus. cancer. <laughs> I had pancreatic cancer Jesus. in my lungs, my stomach, my appendix, appendix both lungs, and the doctor even thinks it went to the brain at the last. <laughs> that's some pretty bad stuff. Yeah. Bad stuff. But that's just chump change to my God. Amen. 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 My God is able to do a yeah. bunch we got something to shout about. We got something that we know. It's not a guess. I know who my dad is. And I know who my mother 
is. For the Jerusalem which is free, which is from above, is the mother of us all. This treasure I got. My earthly mother would like to give it to me to make me a better boy. But she just couldn't do it. But God, that gift come out of heaven and settled down in my life. And God tabernacled with me. And so right now, dear children of God, if we'll just allow and recognize who and what we are. We won't live in this beggarly elements anymore. Glory. Because we don't. Main thing of ministers and of views like Brother Marlowe said is that either we'll look at it and think, well, that's too big. I, there ain't no way that I could ever do that. That can't be God asking me to do that. I can't do that. I would, God would never ask me to do that. Oh, yes, he will. Let me tell you where you can find your calling. Almost every time, I'm going to give you a little secret. Maybe not always, but it's Brother Bob's theory on ministry. You know where he'll call you? If you can play a piano very well, usually God will call you. If you can do anything very, very well, most of the time that's not where God's going to call you. You may do that as ministry, but God likes to take things that are not. Yes. Likes to take foolish things to bring to naught the things that are. The weak things to found the mighty the base things that come found these things so that no flesh would ever glory in his presence. Amen. As I was saying, how do you know how big your God is? If you hadn't went if I hadn't went through cancer, I was terrified. I am telling you, I was trembling, shaking in my boots. I did not know what to do. I, all I could do, I always said this. I found out I was the world's biggest liar. <laughs> I always said I wasn't afraid to die. Oh, yeah. I, but wait till you. He comes out from the door. I said, I don't want to die. <laughs> I did that. And I always said, I could handle pain. I'm tough. I'm a macho. I found out I want their bit of the morphine. Yes. Dilatum. Anything they give me. Help me. I'm hurting here. I found out I could do either one yeah. of those things. But I found out that God could take me through it. Yes. And so how God leads us, and he's going to bring us. That's like, can they build a, a, a wall out of these old burned-out stones? Well, they're, they're, you put a fox on that, and that's going to run over. And they were selling that stuff and just trying to belittle them. But, you know, they just kept yelling. Just keep yelling. And if you're waiting for your flesh to keep accusing you and say, start bragging on you and say, well, you can do it, it's never going to happen. That's the truth. But we walk by faith right. and not by sight. Amen. Amen. We see the unseeable. Glory. We hear the unhearable. Yes. And we do the impossible. Amen. Yes. Because it's all through Christ. And that's why they was yelling at And 52 days later, that wall was built. Everybody's shook in their boots. Oh, said Ballot and Tobiah. They was yelling on the other side of the wall. They had to take the recognition. The hand of God was with those feeble Jews. I'm telling you, God is going to show himself strong. This is one of the most incredible opportunities that we can do. If you'll just keep that childlike faith to believe God can do anything? Amen. What is God run short of? Right. Do we have a different brand of the Holy Ghost no. than no. what Apostle had? No. Is there a worse kind of flesh than what Apostle Paul had? Right. Or no. Matthew, Mark, or your mother? Flesh. flesh has been flesh for 6,000 years. The Holy Ghost has been the Holy Ghost for eternity. And I'm telling you, greater is He. That's in you. Amen. 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 Why don't you dare? Amen. As Brother Marlow said, imagine. Great Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Allow God to bring you Come on. before great people. Yes. Because I'm telling you, God is able to do anything. Yes. Amen. God can bring you forth kings. God wants to tabernacle with you. Yes. He said, Behold, the tabernacle of God has come down with men. And there's something about when God is tabernacling with you that people will just stop. They'll 
want what you've got. You won't have to preach a message to them. Just tell me, what have you got that I don't have? I don't have the peace. I don't have that joy that you've got. I might have been serving God all my life. But God is just wanting you to take him at his word. You know one of the saddest things with my daughter is said, Daddy, I'm hungry. Now my daughter's grown. She makes good money. Let him say she did. Say, Daddy, I'm hungry. I don't know what I'm going to do the next meal. I know you're not going to feed me. Because I, I don't mind you as well as the world. Or, Daddy, I'm scared. I remember my little girl. Every night, until she was about 11 years old, I sleep so sound back then. And middle of the night, my little girl would get up and she would go to my mother or my wife's side of the bed. And Linda was a very light sleeper. She said, You get back to bed. <laughs> Jeffrey would cry, but her mother made her go back there. So it didn't take her too long. Jeffrey would come on my side of the bed. <laughs> she said, Daddy, I'm scared. I would scoot over. And Jeffrey would lay, she would kick grind your teeth, flounce, do everything in the world. But I wasn't about to let her go back to bed because she was scared. And I said, you know, if you're being evil, you know how to get to get your children. How much more were you Heavenly Father? Folks, never, ever, look how big the problem is. Look how big your father is. Someone said a mountain is a hill from God's point of view. All right. There's no big thing. Someone said, is it, is it right to pray for little things with God? I said, really? So what's big to God? It's all little stuff. And folks, if you'd like to have a big testimony, listen at this message. Just step out in big faith. All right. Just believe that God, that little nudge, that God's yes. talking to you. He wants to show himself strong to you. He wants to do great exploits with you. He wants to show this world a real manifestation of him in the hearts of men. You look at young people. I love young people. I was watching these last night. They think, well, I'm too young to work for God. That's crazy. That's stinking thinking, Sister Jen. I love that part. Stinking thinking. That's what Joyce Meyer said. You're not too young to ever be used to God. Oh, praise God. Uh, Demas Shakarian, full gospel. That little boy prophet couldn't speak, couldn't hear. How could God ever use a boy like that? Everybody said, well, nobody. God couldn't use a boy, couldn't speak, can't hear. The Holy Ghost came in. And one night he prophesied that the church is going to come here someday. And they're going to destroy us. And God will tell us when it's time to leave. Oh, thank you, Father. Twenty years later, they called him the boy prophet. He didn't speak no more. The Holy Ghost come on him again. He drew a picture of the United States, supposedly, and drew a little circle around California, around Los Angeles. And he said, the Lord said, it's time to leave. Oh, thank you. Everyone that knew that that was a boy prophet fled. For America. They sold out and left. The Turks come right in. It was one of the first experiments in genocide yes. in world history. It's right at the turn of the century. You know, not a voice ever rose in protest of what the Turks did to the Armenians. Not one word. Adolf Hitler said, the world did not lift a finger to save the Armenians. They will not lift a finger to save the Jews. Sadly. He took his plan of what the Turks did to them. Let's make it a long story short. Those uh, folks that left, one day they was walking down the street. They thought they were the only ones that had the Holy Ghost. It fell over in Armenia and southern Russia before it fell over here. It was known fact that it was happen. And they was going down the street and they heard people shouting like they did. And they went to Azusa Street. And the Holy Ghost was being poured out in this country, just like theirs. Oh, thank you. I'm telling you, I want a testimony. Yes. <clears throat> I want to do something great for God. Amen. Yes. 
I want to be a living tabernacle. Amen. Say, behold, the Amen. tabernacle of God. It came to Bradenton this Amen. week. When I get here, I think, oh, the Amen. tabernacle of God's everywhere. Amen. That's what God wants to do. Yes. And so don't consider how old you are, Amen. that you're too old. I'm going to tell you, have you ever seen a wonder from God? See, there was great wonders. wonders. I've seen some miracles. I'm, I'm a miracle. I saw a wonder one time, and I'm still wondering about that wonder. <laughs> An older gentleman, Brother Howell, a boomer, come up on his walker, about 82 or 83 years old. And he wanted me to pray for him, and he had a friend named Brother Howell, about the same age. And Brother Howell was sitting about like, or standing about like you are. And uh, Brother Boomer come up, and I prayed for him. And now you think, say, man, that's the craziest preacher I've ever heard. But I saw this. Now, I had a witness, so I know I'm not crazy. I believe both for that. When I prayed for Brother Boomer, God is my witness. As long as my hands was on him, he was about 45 years old. Uh -huh. I sat there and shook my head and thought, what in the world made me imagine that? And Brother Howell was standing over there. He's going, and I went over to him. He said, Brother Bond, I had the strangest experience I've ever had in my life. I said, what was it, Brother Hal? He said, the whole time you had your hands on Brother Boomer. He looked like he was about 45 years old. Amen. I'm telling you, Brother Young. Amen. Brother John Paul Martin. Amen. Brother Farius. Amen. God, go back to him. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Going to say he's the author of time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That can be done by the Holy Ghost, however. Yes, when we say we got this treasure, yes. we don't understand. Yes. We don't even have a clue yes. what we've got in our lives. Yes. My God, we're going to yes. see some great things. Yes. I've seen great things. Yes. I want to do great things. I want to get out of the boat. Don't you? Yes. Aren't you tired yes. of playing the safe game? Yes. Why not just yes. make one giant? and just get out in the water and just see what God might do. You know what? You may go... <laughs> you may have to hold your nose and get up and paddle and think, well, that wasn't God. But you know what? I'd like to try it anyway. I'd like to get out again and say, I'm going to try it again. It might take seven times, but I'm tired of living this mundane life, this average life, because there's something so great in the Holy Ghost that we just scrape it. We go in and out of it from time to time, but it's always meant for us to abide in the Holy Ghost. If you abide in me and that words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will. Does God really mean that? Or is that just taking up pages? If you don't believe that, let me see your Bible. I believe that. I'll tear that out of your Bible and put it right there. I believe God meant what he said. He doesn't have to take that. It's all a fighting and a wonderful baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because you know why he can say that then? You're no safety risk when you're in the Holy Ghost. There's no pride. Amen. There's no self-will there. Amen. It's just all the mind of God. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. He will give you the desire of your heart. Amen. I promise you, when you're in the Holy Ghost, you won't want to be wanting a brand new Cadillac. Amen. You won't be wanting a yacht. You'll just be wanting more of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When you get in the Holy Ghost, that's all you want. Yes. It's just more of Jesus. Yes. Wow, Jesus, you come in your heart. I'm telling you, this is the greatest time. I wouldn't trade times with Apostle Paul. You can say, I, I want you run with Apostle Paul or David Clark and Brother Marvel and Brother Ferry. I'll say, give me these guys. Because I know the time that we're living in, that the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. Paul's church went out of existence. But there's going to be a little stone cut out of the mountain with hands. Yes. And we're getting ready to face a monster. Yes. He's going to be big and bad. Yes. Who's afraid of this big, bad beast out there? <laughs> not I. Not I. Yeah. Not I. Not I. Because I know who my father is. I know what my commission is. And I know that I can gloriously, triumphantly do everything. In Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you folks, how can we sit? How can we sit still? Knowing that we who we are, that our birthright is, we don't.
don't have to live a victory element anymore that we can know that royal blood is flowing through our lives. I don't care if you just got out of prison. If you've been a child of God, you don't start all over again. That's a thing I don't like. Say, well, you can start. You don't start all over again. You get up and say, forgive me, Dad. My daughter did not have to go through rebirth after I spanked her. I wear her hind end out. Many a time, she'd cry and say, Daddy, I'm not going to see this. I said, and then we'll put this little principle of life in with our church family. And I spanked my daughter, and she deserved it. I'll say that. And sometimes I spanked her, maybe she didn't deserve it. One time she hardly ever, but I didn't spank my daughter that often. But, but I was strict with her. I was very good I was strict with her because I loved her. You know why God's strict with you? Yes. Because he loves you. Amen. He's not going to leave you to your devices. You can look at other people do all kinds of crazy things. But correct me, Lord. Correct me, Lord. Watch over me, God. Correct me, Lord. Because I know he loves me. If he, a child left his own devices was bring his church mother to shame. I don't want to be left to my devices. But Jennifer, one time, I spanked her. And she was bawling, of course. And, and uh, I think she was over-dramatizing, but it wasn't that hard. But anyway, she, I just thought I'd kill her. And I said, Jennifer, you know why I spanked you? I said, I love you. She said, Daddy, you spanked me hard. And said, I don't love you no more. And I said, you don't love me no more? She said, no, I don't love you no more. And I, you think I'm going to let that child go to bed like that? I said, you don't love me anymore? I just ran to her, grabbed her, put my arms around her where she couldn't. She was kicking. And I started kissing her. And I said, but Daddy loves you. She said, well, I don't love you. I said, but your Daddy loves you. She said, but I don't love you. <laughs> but I said, but I love you. She just came back this way for me. And pretty soon, I watched that spirit break. Her little arms come down from her side, went around my neck, and said, oh, Daddy, I'm sorry. I do love you. Brother Steve, if one of us will keep saying that, if we get in a fight, and one of us say, I don't love you anymore, say, I'm not letting you go. I love you. Wait, I don't love you, but I love you. I love you. I love you. And there will never be a fight in this church. But I'm persuaded that nothing in this earth is going to be able to separate you from that love of God's people.